Hey guys, Matt Jones in Melbourne, uh, outside this uh, beautiful old uh, building. Uh, very characteristic of a lot of the architecture in Melbourne, uh, in Melbourne. Uh, it's an area I grew up in and this building, I suspect, was the private hospital where uh, Major General uh, Pompey Elliott died in 1931. Uh, he died of suicide. Um, tragically at the age of 52 um, <clears throat> and uh, it's interesting reading his obituary which you can get online uh, written in in 1931 it says uh, that he he died of hemorrhaging as a result of a complication with um, being in in uh, in medical care um, but actually he was admitted to the Alfred Hospital in I think at the, toward the end of 1930 because he tried to gas himself at home. Uh, so it's a pretty gruesome end. And then um, after he was released, I believe he took his, his uh, shaving razor and cut his arm and was brought into a private hospital. This is the, probably the only building I can think of that description in this area. And, um, and uh, was uh, sadly, sadly died uh, to a state funeral. Um, just uh, over here, you can see the the, um, the idiosyncratic uh, towers of Malvern Town Hall, a uh, beautiful building. And, um, you know, it's a long way from uh, the Boer War or uh, Gallipoli and campaigns through France and Belgium where uh, Elliot was, where he really distinguished himself as a, as a, keen Australian commander with a real care for uh, success in operations. Uh, importantly, with an absolute uh, interest in preserving the welfare and the lives of his soldiers, both at war and then later at peacetime, uh, after he became a senator in the federal parliament, uh, he spent a lot of his time and energy and his efforts to uh, seek the interests of the welfare of of, um, of uh, veterans and uh, the reason I mention him is uh, you know too often I think we see ourselves uh, with confronted with new situations so here I'm talking about this current uh, era of interest in veterans and uh, how people are looking at things like PTSD and and and, uh, and uh, transition from um, from a service, particularly after operations, as though it's a new thing. But back in 1918 uh, and the years that followed, that was very much uh, an issue that was uh, poorly addressed uh, in general by Australian society. And I think um, you know, if you've studied history of the First World War, some of the things you would have looked at would have been the the social impact of the conscription campaign um, in much greater detail than the impact of veterans upon the, after their return to Australia. You may have looked at uh, how some of them were given some land packages for farming, on, often on land that was unsuitable for farming, but the actual human dimension of that story goes untold. So we haven't been telling the truth, we haven't been truth telling when it comes to how we've dealt with veterans uh, from earlier conflicts uh, right up to today. And so I think we do, do, do ourselves an injustice when we try and look at this narrative about veterans as a new thing uh, in, in this, um, this, this era going forward. And it's great to see in the budget, the recent budget, uh, $350 million uh, being put aside to address issues of uh, veterans' health, um, broadly speaking. Um, and I think that Dan Tian, the Minister of Veterans Affairs, is definitely going down the right track in that regard. But, um, you know, I'm concerned that there's this disconnect between policy and the experience of individual members, individual people. And, uh, you know, here, I'm, this is a street across the road from from uh, the building where Elliot probably suicided. Some beautiful old uh, buildings, um, a lovely old back of a 
Bluestone Church there. <coughs> you know, and and uh, I think this street sort of captures the that that somewhat um, binary um, understanding of the plight of the veteran. Uh, we've got a beautiful street here um, where a lot of uh, wealth has been maintained. Um, meanwhile, after the First World War, a lot of veterans struggled. Uh, this this street is typical of a certain part of of Australian society, particularly here in Melbourne. But it it fails to capture the story of veterans, as we saw across the road, location where Elliot died. This is a long long-winded way of saying that I'm about to uh, announce a gathering I'm inviting you to called Dispatches, which will examine uh, needs of veterans um, from issues of policy and uh, transition. And I'd like to have your input. Uh, many people have stories to share, and they don't have to be people who have put on the uniform or have deployed. There's people who are uh, related to people who have served, people who are friends, or people who maybe know nothing about the life and uh, experience of soldiers or veterans, but maybe have some useful experience that they can bring to bear. Uh, this gathering will be called, will be subtitled Dispatches, meaning uh, the act of sending people away, um, and it, uh, it, it pulls on the 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 uh, decoration of mentioning dispatches, which is a, a very old um, decoration that is still used today for reflecting uh, service uh, of a high standard. And the I think the title of it will be the Pompey Elliot Veterans Forum, which they can take to address the realities of how we've uh, how we address and have failed to address the needs of veterans, particularly in, a year, in the centenary of Anzac, looking back on a very successful officer who was treated very badly by his peers um, and also uh, other people upon returning to the point where he was um, so affected by things that occurred during the First World War, such as Fromel, and um, just the general uh, experience that he decided to uh, end his life. Uh, that is the outcome we want to avoid at all costs for all veterans and will be one of the key focuses of this forum that will focus on policy and transition. So I'm inviting you to contribute to the Pompey Elliott Veterans Forum. Love to hear your thoughts, uh, love to help you have, have your help to organise it. Welcome aboard, um, drop me a line, I'd like to hear from you. Thanks for listening.